Kapoor, let's bring you the very latest from the United States where it's becoming much clearer now that the Democrats are on their way to winning. But it's not going to be something we will know officially very soon. That's because the Republicans are unlikely to let go. But here's the latest. Joe Biden has won the battleground uh, states of Michigan and Wisconsin. Prizes, in a sense, reclaiming a key part of the blue wall that slipped away from the Democrats four years ago and dramatically narrowing President Donald Trump's pathway to re-election. Many say that pathway has effectively ceased to exist. Uh, all this uh, a day after Election Day, where neither candidate had cleared the 270 Electoral College votes needed to win the White House. But Biden's victories in the Great Lake states left him needing left him needing just two states, medium-sized ones, or perhaps one big one, to cross the threshold and becoming president-elect. Biden, who has received more than 71 million votes, the most in history, was joined by his running mate Kamala Harris at an afternoon news conference and said he now expected to win the presidency, though he stopped short of declaring an outright victory. So let me just uh, introduce our panel. We've got Durab Supariwala with us. IP Bajpai joins us. Kishore Madhubani, Vishnu Prakash and Jyoti Balhotra. I'd like to thank all of them uh, for joining us. We'll have them up in a few moments from now. But what we actually intend to do um, over the next 15 minutes or so is to explain in as simple terms as possible what the key states remaining are, what is the path to victory for Trump, if any, what is Biden's path to victory, uh, some of the key counties where voting is still on and why these key counties are important uh, considering their typical or their traditional voting pattern so far. There's a Senate election also happening in America. We've not discussed that enough. Why is that important? So firstly, um, states remaining, right? Let's have this up uh, on full screen and uh, bring in our panelists as well, right? Let's bring this graphic up on full screen so that I can read some of the points and Dorab, if you can join me here, uh, Arizona, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Alaska, 71 seats. Uh, these are all absolutely critical, but at this juncture, it appears Arizona, Georgia, uh, Nevada, these three states, we should know in a very finite period of time, um, you know, we can take a call on them. It appears that they're all going uh, to the Democrats. So run us through how that's taking place. You know, let's take, let's take Arizona. I think uh, Trump, uh, Biden is leading, but what's happening is that these were all originally Republican states. Arizona was a Republican state. Yes. So now the stuff that's coming from Maricopa County is slightly more Republican. But still, he needs to win the rest of the votes by 57, 58% to 42% to close the gap. It doesn't look as if he'll be able to close that gap that Biden has built up. Then we come to Georgia. Georgia is a fascinating thing. The lead was about, I think, 200,000. Now yes. it's down. This morning when we were talking, it was 30,000, this afternoon. Now it's 23,000. And still lots of votes to come. As the votes come in, and they're coming from Fulton County, which is where um, Atlanta is, and from other larger cities. That, you know, the votes that are coming in, they seem to be from Democratic counties and from urban counties. So obviously that vote is shrinking now. He's just leading by a very small number of votes, 23,000 votes. And if he goes down, he might take the senator down with him. Because in Georgia, anybody who wants in a Senate race, he must get more than 50%. Okay, just Otherwise, hold your thought on the, on the race for the Senate. We've got some... No, I'm just saying prevent. taking him down with him. Sure. We, uh, we'll, is, we'll, we'll come to uh, Dorab, the fine, Senate, fine, in two fine. minutes. Okay, got it. Um, Nevada is very close. I think they are now going to count tomorrow morning. They've stopped counting for the night. Nevada, the small right. lead that uh, small lead that he has, and not counting for the night. I think those completes those three states. Okay, Jyoti, do you want to come in on the next one, where we are looking at Trump's path to victory, and then we'll have Biden's path to victory as well. So uh, let's have that graphic up, and let's have it up. Uh, there we go. So Trump at the moment is at two fourteen. Remember, 270 is the magic mark. Pennsylvania and Georgia and North Carolina, uh, Nevada. It appears on the basis of where Trump stands right now uh, and the number of um, seats available to him, he would need to win all of these four states, which by the look of it is very unlikely. For starters, Nevada, um, at, at this stage, uh, he's under uh, the... Uh, 
the Democrats are doing quite well. And the leads that he has in North Carolina, in Georgia, and in Pennsylvania are very small. And the point that Dorab was mentioning is that if you look at the pattern of um, votes coming in, uh, it, it, it appears that they may be favoring the Democrats. So, Jyoti, does it basically mean that it's all over for Trump? Until it's over, isn't it, Vishnu? But yes, uh, I think some of the American networks are saying that Biden is inching close to victory to that 270 electoral votes mark. But uh, remember that Trump isn't going to give, up, give it up so easily. Several of his teammates have already started suits uh, in several of these states, including Wilson, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. And he's going to take it, he's going to really stretch it. And I think, you know, like he said yesterday in a, in a press briefing, he says, I'm a sore loser. I mean, as if we didn't know that already, but uh, he's making it very clear to Biden that he's not going to give it up. But what's unfortunate, I think, is, and perhaps he should learn from us here in India, is that when you've lost, you've lost. That's what politics is about, isn't it? Is that the better man wins. And in this case, if, if Trump loses, he should concede gracefully. The country is so polarized, it's so divided. Uh, and, and it's really shocking how this is, uh, the, the way this is unfolding. No, but it anyway, is, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, but, um, but you know, frankly, I don't want to live in America right now. I'm so happy that we have an election commission in India, which- And we've really got electronic voting machines, so well. right, Jyoti? I mean, it's so, yeah, with, I mean, with a paper trail, right? So to, to prevent all of these crazy allegations of fraud and disenfranchisement right. needs yeah. to be looked at in the Supreme I Court know, of the I, US. Know, I don't know if you remember, this is, uh, you know, in the, about 10 or 15 years ago when Al Gore lost his election and there was this whole, it became a joke. The Brandon Chad vote, Chad, right? The, the hanging, hanging chads. Chad. Were the oh chads God, inside or were they outside? With Yeah, exactly. and you know, it, it's fair to say that Gore lost the election on the basis of that, when in fact he should have won it, right? That It's open but, season you know, on whether... Look at how the world is responding to the American election. Just look at the Chinese press. I mean, the Chinese are telling the Americans, this is not democratic. Right. And, you know, look at, look at the uh, democracy in America. Right. You know, I think that should be a pointer to how... The Chinese telling unfolding. America, look at, uh, look at <laughs> democracy... That's a bit exactly. rich. That's still a bit yes. rich, isn't it? Anyhow. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> Baj, uh, I'm going to come to you for a, a, a series of graphics, but let's look at Biden's path uh, to victory. Let's have that up uh, next. Uh, and on the basis of the lead they already have, uh, Biden's at 253. Remember, we are being conservative about this. Uh, AP has already put Biden at 264, so they've added on another state. But 253, if you remain at that, uh, and he would require Arizona and Nevada. He doesn't need Pennsylvania, which we've been talking about yesterday. So the math is easier for him. But Baj, Nevada at a lead of 0.7%, that's very slender. So um, why should the Democrats assume that that's going to go their way? Uh, well, I think Nevada having a slender lead, but it's a traditionally Democratic kind of place, it should go through when they're ca counting uh, postal ballots. Generally, the trend has been that postal ballots have gone democratic. Except in Arizona, which I think Dorab just mentioned, the counting in there shows a narrowing of the lead from 5% last night to 2% or 3% just now, 2%. So Trump has gained there. And if you look at the postal ballots, he's doing much better here than in other states. And Arizona was a traditional state, and the Republicans have been saying, and Trump's team has been saying, that this is a state we will win. They have actually uh, taken Fox News to task on this, saying, why did you call this state early? And these uh, two states, Arizona and Nevada, are expected today, right? We expect to know what's happening there. No, Nevada will only start counting uh, in their morning, which is quite a few hours away just now. Arizona is counting, but it's going rather slow. I mean, they've gone from 82% to 86% in the last 12 hours. I think the one that is counting faster is Georgia, and Georgia has said they will count all night. So we so might So we are still a, looking at tomorrow, right, Baj? Or, or tonight, best case? We should get Georgia 
by maybe 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, 10 o'clock US time, so maybe 6 or 7 in the evening here. All right. Um, let's go to another uh, key point that you were talking about and what Dorab was also actually talking about, key counties. Uh, those counties in a couple of these battleground states and, and who they're voting for uh, and how this voting pattern could actually uh, have a major say. So, Dorab and Baj, uh, let's, look at, uh, let's look at Georgia first. The key county over here, Fulton, 94% of votes in. Uh, the, the lead of the Democrats, 46% over here. So, Baj, uh, if you look at uh, why, why is this particular county more important uh, in terms of the outcome in Georgia as compared to other counties? Uh, this is Atlanta, basically. Okay. So, it's large. And it's huge. It's the biggest county there. It has a lot of votes and is likely to come through. I mean, there's a huge... Pro, I mean, with a 46% lead means he's got 70% of the votes and Trump has 20% of the votes. So this is a very, very big county uh, compared to all the others in, a, in uh, uh, Georgia. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's bring that up again. The other one is Cobb in Georgia. That's also uh, important. Smaller, 14% is the Democrat lead. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's go to Arizona. Let's bring up the next one. Do we have Arizona uh, as uh, one of the key counties? All right, Arizona, uh, Maricopa. Dorab, you, you've been speaking about this earlier on as well. Uh, it's, a, it's a Democrat lead of 7%, votes in 83%. What is your yeah. reading of Maricopa County in Arizona? As I said earlier, the, the later ballots that are coming in tend to be a bit more Republican, but they have to be almost 57 58 percent republican for them to overhaul the lead that biden already has the question is whether this on the other end the smaller county pima county is also a very large county that is still it's a truly democratic county even the old days maricopa has converted from republican to democrat because of mrs mccain and whatever is happening you know there's a revolt against mr trump but pima is traditionally a democratic county I think the Democrats should hold it, but it could be a close run thing. Okay. Let, I'm sorry, just let me say one thing, Vishnu. Large counties, of the largest 100 counties in America last time, 83 were Democratic. And she, Mrs. Clinton won there by 15 million votes. So right. the large counties tend to be traditionally Democrat. Okay. Uh, the last one over here, one Pennsylvania. One Bar thing, Vishnu. Sorry, Vishnu, Bar one... Baj, go ahead, yes. Uh, on Arizona... Interestingly, the postal vote is much closer here. It's 53, 45, 46, which is not true, say, in Pennsylvania, where it is 70, 30. Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? So, the, so uh, fewer people in Arizona who voted through the postal ballots, the early votes, have voted for uh, the Democrats, right? It's balanced out by a significant number, not, not, not a majority, significant number of re Republican supporters. That's yeah. interesting. But, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, Baj, you want to take this? Key counties, Philadelphia. Um, yeah, I mean, again, Philadelphia is the biggest, biggest county in the state. And <clears throat> it, last time it had a very poor turnout which is why the Democrats felt that they lost this state. This time, the turnout is good. They are doing very well there. They have a huge, huge lead. The lead is, I think, slightly better than Clinton had last time. So, and the counting is still taking place. So, this is a county that could swing the state. Okay. Uh, Ambassador uh, Prakash, why don't you join me as we look at the, um, the race for the Senate and the importance of the Senate? So let's bring this up, the race for the Senate. We've been talking about the presidential election, but which is all very well. But uh, at the moment, uh, with, the, with these results, we're seeing 48-48. It may not be t for a few more months till we get a, a clarity, some sort of clarity on who's going to come, who's going to be dominant in the U.S. Senate. Um, so, that's, uh, so the likely situation is that the, the Republicans could, in fact, uh, on the basis of the leads they have, end up with a 51-49. So... My question to you, Ambassador, why is this race for, for, for the Senate critical in getting an idea of uh, U.S. governance in the next few months? Well, 
for any president to push his agenda to uh, to govern in the manner in which he wants get his laws in place he wants he needs both the houses to be supportive and uh, he there was a lot of hope expectation in the democratic quarters that uh, you know given the projections given uh, the opinion polls that uh, uh, there was a kind of a wave in in favor of democrats they were hoping that they will manage to get the the senate also but here what we find is that even in the house uh, the republicans have gained three seats i think uh, though overall the democrats are ahead well he'll have to deal with it i mean there have been so many presidents who have had uh, a div uh, divided how uh, congress and they have dealt with it but certainly it makes uh, life easy for the president it makes it easy to to push his agenda let's have a graphic up on the importance of the senate um kishor madhuri would you would you like to come in over here so all legislation has to go through the senate all senior federal officials uh, all supreme court judges all federal court judges all of this has to be ratified by the us senate this being the case uh, uh how how would it be for governance in the us if the republicans were still able to retain uh, the senate despite well, losing certain, or potentially losing the presidential election uh well i think certainly uh by the way i must say i'm very impressed by the granular knowledge that all my fellow panelists have they're much better informed than i am uh but no, that's 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 the... baj and dorab i i i just talk <laughs> and uh you know yeah. and and parrot out what what they've been working on but yes yes but anyway what i was going to say is my friends in the biden campaign who were very nervous two or three days ago are now reasonably confident that they're going to make it they believe they have enough momentum in all the key states and they're going to get there so they're reasonably confident that they'll get the presidency but they also believe they're not going to get the senate uh they they realize that is beyond their reach now and so it creates a much more difficult uh, environment for biden but on the other hand as you know biden if biden had control the presidency the senate and the house he would have he would have been put under a lot of pressure to move much more left from the bernie sanders wing and and get pushed in that direction and it's a direction that he doesn't want to go into so in some ways with the senate being held by the republicans he has an excuse and he says hey i have to stay in the center i have to work uh, with the senate and as you know the markets uh, have reacted positively uh, to that development because the markets actually believe that a divided us government with the presidency on uh, on one party and the senate another party actually means that there's a less interventionist us government and the less interventionist us government means is better for the economy so it may not necessarily be a bad result uh for for uh joe biden and the critical thing is this joe biden also wants to work very hard to heal the divisions in his country and i my friends tell me that he's assembled a formidable transition team right really you will you you will all surface in a while and that formidable transition team their main goal is to try and see what they can do to bring the country together because they realize it's never been as divided never been as polarized as it is today so the priority number one for the united states is to carry out some massive healing process and that's their goal and so when you have a divide, a senate on one party and the presidency on the other party it sort of makes it very clear there's still a lot that needs to be done all right um All right, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us. I'm going to race through a, a final point right now. I'm running short of time. The lawsuits which have come about so far, because this is going to be key, since T Trump doesn't appear to be uh, in the mood to be gracious. Wisconsin um, is going to be filing for a recount. Georgia to ensure law on absentee ballots. That's that's a suit that's been filed. A temporary halt has been asked for on counting to review mail ballots in Michigan and Pennsylvania as well. Trump. has joined a, a supreme court suit on um uh, to to get mail ballots um right uh, he's got certain concerns about mail ballots so already the republicans are, are pushing to do this uh, there's a process of appeal then it would go to the supreme court i don't know if these alone would necessarily halt 
the election process, but it's what, what the Republicans have been saying, that they will uh, go to court, and they've already started doing that. We'll take a short break. More coming up, and uh, we will, of course, keep tracking the U.S. elections. Thank you.